Good evening, guys. Good evening. Good evening. Good otro. Hablando de plata, están ahí, ¿no? Buenas, mamá. Mi buen animal. Yo las pinto como que fuera mi buen animal. Y Ahí se hablan de plata, mira. Yes. Hello, Hello, Marina. Hello, Cesar. Hello. How are you? How are you? Fine, thank you. And you? I'm tired. Ponete los lentes, pinche lentes, para que los compre. Work. Yes. Okay. A hard work. Prepare a report. Oi. You. You are preparing reports? Are you? No. Prepare a report? No. No. Okay. Um <laughs> <laughs> Hello teacher. Hello, good good evening to everyone. It's how are you? Bye, thank Bye, you. Bye, thank you. Oh, great. Teacher, so so far so good. What about you? Oh, pretty good. Thanks for asking. A little busy, you know. My schedule is most of the time is like kind of busy, but motivated. It's it's something important. Hello. Can you listen to me? Uh, do you listen to yes. me? Yes. Yes. Yes, teacher. Okay. Perfect. So. Yes. Teacher. Thank you. Yeah, definitely pretty busy all the time because my job is very demanding. But, you know, I, I always enjoy what I do and also encourage to, you know, practice. Something that I really like about this group um, is that most of the time you speak English. So before starting classes, you always are communicating in the language. And that's very promising because you are out of the same you know, activities of speaking in Spanish and you also speak in English. And that's the way because we had to do that way. So practice all the time, practice, practice in the spaces we have so that can help you to improve English. So that is very necessary. Well, let's begin our class today. And before that we start, I just want to ask you, what do you remember we started in the last class? What we did, can you help me with that? We're talking about uh, indirect requests and uh, we writing an informal email. And finally, topic, could you tell Jeff? Okay. Thanks. Best jobs, the best job, best of our personality types too. Okay. Yes, yes. Exactly. We're talking about also, you know, kind of personality. And at the same time, we're discussing about some important points of this one. So that's very nice. And it's something interesting to discuss, guys. Well, let's continue today with our classes. And also we have a, a topic that we will share, like a kind of review. And what I love about this material, as I told you before, is that we had to think in English, like we analyze ideas, structures, and send examples, and everything has to be with English, and we get practice, and that is something that we need to know. So the topic is could 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 tell. Uh, in that case, that we're gonna share with you right now the topic related to indirect questions as a part of review, and also this is very interesting. We have direct equations and indirect equations. A direct equation is when, you know, um, request, we could say request, when we have to do something and um, the person says something directly. For example, I'm saying, you know what? I'm tired. In my case, I said it. So I am 
using a direct statement. Look at the example, statements or sentences. It's the same word. Jeff, Tony is having a party. Uh, Jeff, comma, Tony is having a party. And so you can say that, that you are saying, Jeff, that Tony is having a party. Or for example, we say, hey, Santiago, Morena is having a party. So I'm, I'm saying uh, Santiago about Morena's party. So we have an idea. And also, this is the sentence. We have another one. And the indirect request introduced by that. Could you tell Jeff that Tony is having a party? In that case, it's different because the indirect request introduced by that. Hey, Jeff, Jeff, Tony is having a party. So we have a sentence. But we using the indirect request will be like, could you tell Jeff? Podrías decirle a Jeff que Tony va a tener una fiesta. Entonces yo acá estoy haciendo una uh, indirect request because I'm using a model verb. And I'm saying like, hey, podrías decirle a él que, and we are using an indirect request in that case. Instead of saying, Jeff, Tony is having a party. It's like very direct. Ese Jeff, Tony is having a party is a direct, right? By grano. But in cambio, in an indirect request, usted es una solicitud, usted consulta. Hey, podría decirle a Jeff que Tony va a tener una fiesta? So in that case, that, that's the difference between an indirect request and indirect request. We have the imperatives. Jeff, don't be late. An imperative is an instruction, an indication. Cuando usamos los imperativos, los imperativos nos dan una orden, nos dan una indicación. Hey, go to your room. Pay attention in class. Be on time. Bring homework on time. Do the activities where you were giving an imperative statement. We're giving an instruction. Jeff, don't be late. And that indirect request using infinitives will be, can you tell Jeff not to be late? Can you tell Jeff not to be late? We have, in that case, this example. And then we have the in equation, how is that possible, teacher? Okay, I will explain you. In a direct, Sophia, are you free on Friday? Oh, Sophia, do you have my number? It's a direct equation. It's a direct request. But in an indirect request, introduced by if or whether. Ambos significan sí, if or whether. Pero este no es un sí de afirmación, sino que es un sí de probabilidad, de como que, hey, ¿y si llueve? Y si vienes a tiempo, so that's what we call um, if or whether to introduce, right? Let's see the example. Um, in the just not question is like, Sophia, are you free on Friday? And we say, can you ask Sophia if she's free on Friday? Entonces ya en indirecta ya no lo digo directamente yo, sino que ocupo una persona como, como puente para que le pregunte En este caso, mira, y le podrías preguntar a Sofía si ella está libre el viernes. Entonces, la direct statement o direct, direct request es cuando yo lo digo directamente a la persona, sin granos. Hey, Sofía, ¿vas a estar libre el viernes? En la indirect es cuando usted pues, solicita a alguien más para que le pregunte. Eh, Sofía, do you have my number? ¿Y cómo sería en indirect request? Could you ask her whether or not she has my number. In that case, you are requesting something specifically. Let's continue with this part. Um, let's see. WH questions. Como nos quedaría con una WH question? Let's see what happened. Um, Jeff, when does the party start? Jeff, when does the party start? The equation will be, can you ask Jeff when the party starts? Or Sophia, what time is, 
What time should I pick you up? Sofía, ¿y a qué horas te recojo? Sofía, what time should I pick you up? And in an indirect request would be like, you know, could you ask Sofía what time I should pick her up? Pick her up. So you can see the statement, right? Entonces, a eso le llamamos direct and indirect request. And it's about practice. So for that reason, what we had to do, guys, we're going to try to rewrite those statements that we have right there and ask indirect requests. You have the freedom to ask questions or you can say, teacher William, um, I don't understand this sentence, so I can help you. Y tenemos ocho oraciones. Le vamos a pedir a alguien que nos ayude a leer las oraciones. Las primeras cuatro, le vamos a pedir a alguien que nos ayude a leer las primeras cuatro. Y alguien que nos lea, pues, de las cinco a la ocho. Okay, who's going to help us to read the first four statements? I need a volunteer. Me, teacher. Thank you. Jaime. Since the number one. Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. Nina, can you do... Can you do the... I'm sorry. Uh, do us. Do, like, us. Do okay. us. Do us. Nina, can you do us a favor and drive and drive us to the party? Tony, how many friends can I bring to your party? Sophia, are you going to the party with Jeff? Kevin, did you accept the invitation to Tony's party? That's it. Yeah, so in that case, you can see that those statements are direct. It is decir, son directas because you are asking the person directly. You are requesting something to the person. But in that case, we need to transfer them to an indirect request. So we need someone else to, to ask this person. Okay, who is going to help me with the number five to number eight here? In, who wants to help me to read? Thank you. Teacher. Thank you. Teacher. Yeah. Uh, Mario, are you going to give Tony a gift? And Mary, please return my phone call. Then you owe then you owe me um apology for calling me after my midnight. Kimberly, I have to turn down your invitation to the movies. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Before that we start like switching into the indirect questions, I just want to ask you if you have any question or doubt related to the to the statement to every single question or sentence or is that clear for you guys to, uh, the meaning about the sentences in spanish is it clear for you is that clear for you guys what teacher, to do yeah teacher have a question uh, uh, colby can you uh, call you ask Jeff mm. o, o tiene que ser call you tell o se puede hacer call you ask uh, depending because for example if you're saying could you tell so that's mean that you will give the information but when when I say could you ask I need to ask something specifically you you see the verbs the bird tell you say ask you request so that's the difference between both right Acuérdense mm -hmm. que con tell, usted le va a decir algo, le puede decir, pero cuando, cuando usted dice you ask, este, usted le va a preguntar. Entonces, puedes preguntarle. That's the difference between both. So, look at the examples. Nina, can you do us a favor and drive us to the party? Entonces, ahí usted va a enfocarse en el verbo que le da ya en sí y ya solo lo va a utilizar. Hey, puedes preguntarle o le puedes decir, depende de lo que usted le vaya a informar. Mm -hmm. En, en, en number one, eh, podría ser, eh, yo pensaba que podría ser, call you ask Nina if she can, she can do, do ask do a ask. favor. Uh -huh. Ajá, okay. okay. Exacto. Puede ser así. Yeah, because you, because you need to know if that person can do us a favor. Exactly. So in that case, uh -huh. I need to ask. Yo quiero preguntarle si ella nos puede hacer el favor. Entonces, uh -huh. ask would be a good choice. Yeah. Okay. 
Great. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Sure. Yes. <clears throat> Teacher, uh, one example, for, for example, and the number two, Tony, uh, I can say, uh, could you ask Tony how many friends can I bring to the party? Exactly. Yeah, because you need to know his opinion. So that's why you had to ask, because you need to know. And also when we use tell, is that we are going to inform. Tell is for informing. Ask is to know something. That's the difference between both. Recuerden de que tell es que usted le va a contar algo, pero ask es que usted quiere saber. Yes. Mm -hmm. Saber. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also, as we were saying in the in the class, uh, remember that we are celebrating the Women's Day, right? So happy Women's Day to all the women in this group. So it's Thank a you. pleasure. Yeah. So from there, Thank let's you, teacher. Yeah, let's give it a round of applause. Applause, everybody. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank special you. time. Yeah, definitely. We need to celebrate. Thank you so much. We need to celebrate, not just this day, every day is special for women. So very, very special for all of us. So you had to enjoy it. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Thank You're you. welcome. So that's why we need to make a party. Yeah. <laughs> every day, teacher. <laughs> Definitely. Every day. Not just this day. Every day. Remember us that every day has to be.
Okay, students, almost ready? Hello? Almost ready, just, just two more sentences. Okay, almost closed. And someone else is very close to finish or at least finished. Yes? Okay, so let's see the possible answers so you can help me to um, check how the sentence could be. So I need the volunteer for helping me to um, answer the first one. Um, how do you think could be the number one? In my opinion, the number one could be, and you ask Nina whether or not she is able to do us a favor and drive us to the party. Okay, so could you ask Nina whether? Whether or not she is able to do us a favor okay, and drive that, us to the party, yes. Yes, that makes sense to me, yeah, it's a, a good example. Does anybody has a different sentence or a structure? Yes, teacher, me? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell Nina to ask a favor driver to ask the party? Okay, so could you ask? Yeah. Can you tell? Can you tell? Tell. Uh, can you tell Nina? Can you repeat that? Can you tell Nina? Do do us a favor to drive to the party. To do. Uh -huh. Can you tell to do? Okay. Okay. That also can be possible too because you ask. I mean, you are not asking directly, but can you tell to do a um to do a favor to do us a favor. That makes sense too. And I think the direct one would be like, uh, can you ask? Yes. Mm -hmm. If she yes. can do us a favor, you know, can you can could you ask Nina mm -hmm. if she can do us a favor? So that would be like the most common. But also mm -hmm. the number two, yeah, the second choice also could be important too. Okay, what about the next one? Number two. Teacher, podría ser call you as Tony. How how many friends I can 
I can bring to his party. Uh, can you ask Tony uh, how many friends? How many friends I can bring to his party? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, it's okay for me. Okay. Yes. And then also the compliment. That's that's actually a, a very po good possibility too for the number two. Okay. All right, what about the number three? Sophia, are you going to the party with Jeff? Teacher, uh, could you ask Sophia yeah. if she's going to the party with Jeff? Mm -hmm. uh, could you ask Sophia? Could you ask Sophia if she going to the party with Jeff? Okay. Okay, that's okay. Also, this structure is clear. Could you ask Sophia if she is going to is she going to the party with Jeff? So that's okay to me because it's an indirect question. That's right. And at the same time, very clear too. All right, so let's see. Let's see the next one. Uh, the number four, what do you have for the number four? Look at the examples here. And also we are talking about Kevin. Maybe could you ask Kevin whether or not he accept the invitation to Tony's party. Mm -hmm. And yeah, nice. Uh huh. Okay. Can you repeat it, please? Could you ask Kevin whether or not he accept the invitation to Tony's party? Mm hmm. Okay. Sounds very nice. That sounds very interesting. If you say whether or not, I mean, because you are not sure if the person will accept the invitation or not, whether or not. Okay, see, see or no, right? So, because you need to know if the person will be capable mm -hmm. to do that. Correct. That is a very nice statement. Congratulations in that case. Thank you. All right. Okay, so let's continue with the next part. And also, we're talking about the number five. It says, Mario, are you going to give T Tony a gift? Uh, teacher, uh Maybe could you ask Mario if he's going to give Tony a gift? Mm -hmm. Okay. If he's going to give a uh, give Tony a gift, okay. Could you ask Mario if he's going to? Yeah, he's going to give Tony a gift. Okay, that's that's very interesting too. Mm hmm. Nice, nice, nice. So also you can compare your answers there for this one. And what about the number six? It says, any, any Mary, please return my phone call. I have one idea. Yes. Can you tell Maria, okay. Can you tell Maria that we need she please return my cell phone. If she placed, okay. Mm -hmm. I think it's a little wrong. Could you tell Maria that I need she please return me my cell phone? Mm -hmm. Teacher, the yo me uh, could you tell in Maria that please return my phone call? Mm -hmm. Could you tell that? Uh huh. Teacher, in my case, could you tell in Mary if she can return my phone call? Okay. Is, yes. It's correct. Yeah, it's correct. Mm -hmm. I think it's like more direct. And um, um, could you could you ask any Mary if she if she return my phone call please? So you can also use please at the beginning or at the end, so it doesn't affect. 
So remember that when we use please, because we are requesting something very formal, formally. So that's why uh, please, this magic word is very important, especially when we make a request or we ask someone to do something. So don't forget to use please as every single statement because it's very formal to say, please, excuse me. Could you give me a second? Could you do me a favor? It's a very formal way to request something. That's okay. Okay, what about the number seven? It says, then you owe me an apology for calling me after midnight. So, okay, how do you think this would be? Look at this one. Okay, look at this. Look at this one. Look at this example. Okay, look at this one, and uh, number seven, right? So then you owe me an apology for calling me after midnight. How do you think it would be? Could you tell Tony he owes me an apology for calling me after midnight? Mm-hmm. Yes. It says them, them, right? Then, so you say, could you tell them? Could you tell them that owe me an apology for calling me after midnight? Okay, look, yeah, so that, that, that would be great. Look at this one. Could you tell them that he owe me an apology for calling me after midnight so you are saying like you know what um hey you you owe me an apology because i was trying to sleep and you called me at that time so you are um saying that you tell no ask you are tell to do something so that would be a good way to change this direct equation to an indirect equation So you also can compare that. Okay, and the last one, it says, look how it says, Kimberly, I have to turn down your invitation to the movies. Kimberly, I have to turn down your invitation to the movies. Okay, look at this one. Um, Look at example. Maybe, uh, could you tell Kimberly that I having to turn down your invitation to the movie? Okay, yeah, there is a good choice too, definitely. So could you tell Kimberly that I have, and also you can see the rest of the examples, right? Okay, that's uh, very interesting. That I have to turn down your invitation. Okay, so that is... Let's see, down, to, let me write it here. Okay, look at this one. Could you tell Kimberly that I have to turn down 
her invitation. It's like we're saying, podrías decirle a Kimberly que voy a rechazar su invitación. Uh, turn down her invitation to the movies. En este caso, pues, usaríamos, en vez del your, vamos a utilizar el her, porque nos referimos a Kimberly como es tercera persona. Entonces, ahí cambiamos her for the last one. So, can you tell Kimberly that I have to turn down her invitation to the movies? And we have completed this sentence from direct equation to indirect equation. This is the example we have here. Teacher, y, po y podría en este caso también eh, hacerse de la siguiente manera. Could you tell Kimberly that I can accept your invitation to the movies? Es correcto. Mm, sí. The thing is that no. we're using, remember that we had to, um, in one way, respect the verb that we're using because it's an indirect request. What we had to do is to uh, transfer the sentence to an indirect equation. That means that the verb should be almost the same. We have to use the same verb that we use in the direct request or direct sentence. So that's why you're saying can, but the sentence say that I have to. So can is like from, from possibility. But in this mm -hmm. case, the, the sentence is negative because you're saying that I have to turn down your invitation to the movies. Mm -hmm. So it's different. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you, teacher. You're welcome. So in that case, you had to respect the verb that we're using in a direct request. And also you use the same verb in the indirect request. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. So let's work with some other easy examples. This is gonna be a piece of cake for you guys. So do, do we go on to the next slide? Do we change to the next slide? Say yes or not. My case, you can do it. Thank you. Okay, look at this one. Okay, so what I want you to do is you to write a possible answer, uh, a, a complement for the equation. Where, where is the bus station? That is the equation. Where is the bus station? Could you tell me? And also you had to write the possible answer. When do the shop closed? Will you tell me, will you let me know when? and you write the possible answers about it. Why was the train late? Do you know what is the, and also you have to write this one. So I, I want you to think about the possible answers. So we have a couple of minutes to uh, try to transfer these statements in a indirect request. So I will give you some minutes to answer especially for the first five and the other ones, we're gonna do it together. So let's try to formulate these equations and transfer them into an indirect request. Teacher, uh, perdón. Yeah. Eh, de la número uno, podrías decirme, no es lo mismo que está arriba en la terminación de la, de la oración. Uh, could you tell me where? Where is the buy station? En este caso, como es una pregunta indirecta, eh, el verbo to be va a tener un cambio. Entonces, mm -hmm. el verbo to be va hasta el final. Could you tell me where the bus station is? Eh, because it's not a direct question, it's an indirect. Cuando es direct, usted dice where is. Pero cuando es una oración indirecta, el verbo to be va hasta el final. Es como, por ejemplo, cuando yo les digo, what time is it? What time is it? Um, look at the chat. What time is it? Y si yo digo, do you know what time? And look at this one. It is. Okay. 
Veamos la diferencia entre los dos. La primera pregunta es directa. What time is it? ¿Qué hora es? Pero en la segunda es, do you know what time it is? En este caso, cuando yo digo, do you know? Aquí le, me faltó el ponerle el, do you know what time it is? Porque ya no es una pregunta directa. Entonces, el verbo to be va hasta el final. What time it is? Ahí we say, we had to write what. No sabes qué hora es. Uh -huh. Exacto. Entonces, exa Así excellent, teacher. Emerson. Excellent. Así yes. Perfect. Could you tell me where the bus station is and also the, the interrogative sign or the question mark has to be there? Yes. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Um, let's see the number two. Well, think about it and then we're going to do it together because of the time. So, Meanwhile, you work in this activity and I want you to uh, call your names because we will check the attendance list. Así que puedo cambiar la página para, voy a cerrarla acá. Recuerden que por ahí les compartí la presentación también. Usted la tiene ahí. Y como dice el dicho, el que sabe se divierte. Así que ustedes se van a divertir. Tienen que divertir, la verdad. El que sabe se divierte, es el dicho. The proverb. <laughs> So right, I'm going to be switching right now the this one. If you have questions, you can ask questions. Okay, so let's check the attendance list. Um, you listen your name and say present. Uh, Brigitte Lisset Eraso. Present teacher. Thank you. Um, Carmen Guadalupe Escamilla. Carmen. Cesar Alexander Ramirez. Present teacher. Thanks. Eh, Dina Elizabeth Flores. Present teacher. Thanks. Edith Araceli Guzmán. Present teacher. Thanks. Eduardo Alexander Díaz. Present Martin. teacher. Okay, thanks, Lord. 
Elvis Aníbal Rauda. Present teacher. Thanks. Eh, Emerson Alexander Mejía. Present. Eh, Eneida Yamilet González. Present. Jaime Roberto Aldana. Present. Javier Ernesto Lucero. Present. Karen Zuleima Ceseña. Present. Thanks. Uh, Present. Laura, Laura Michelle. Present teacher. Thank you. Maria Catalina Correa. Maria. Present. Um, Marvin Fernando Marcel. Present Thank you. Morena Guadalupe Fuentes. Present teacher. Thanks. Oscar Alberto Rodriguez. Present teacher. Thanks. Um, Raquel Arely Santos. Present teacher. Thank you. Santiago Antonio Chavez. Present teacher. Thank you. Uh, Saranalda Guzmán. Present teacher. Thank you. Okay. Well, most of you are here. That's great. So how are you going with the sentences? Almost ready? Almost, almost, so, so, difficult, easy. How are we going? I have I have three sentences, but I have uh, a little kind of problem with the second one. Because in my opinion, I don't know how it could be changed. I think it is, uh, would you let me know when the shop is closing, maybe? Mm, no, because we don't need uh, is, because we don't have the bird B right there. When the shops close and you go straight, so um would you let me know when the shops close when the shops close mm -hmm. yes just like this yeah because it's a it's an the only chain so we don't need to use when, do. When. we don't need to use when do we, because it's a, it's a indirect statement when we change this sentence from a direct sentence to a indirect we don't use the auxiliary do no because it's not a a direct uh, statement okay i understand thank you All right you're welcome Teacher, uh, number three, do you know why the train was late? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. The number four could be, please tell me what, what the matter is. That's correct. Okay. Pueden ir escribiendo las, las respuestas, pongan el numerito y las van escribiendo en el chat para que las vayamos viendo. So that's what we can do. So we can compare also the answers. Teacher, I have a question. Yeah. And the number four, um, it's, uh, el is puede ir aún si no es pregunta porque ahí no, no tiene el signo de interrogación. The number four. The number four. It yeah. is not a question. It is it is a question, but it it wasn't added, but it should have the because you're saying what is the matter? So please tell me what the matter is. It's a question. Huh. But mm -hmm. I don't know why it was not added. Um maybe they forgot mm -hmm. it. I don't know why. Okay. Yeah, but it's a question, but indirect. Mm -hmm.
picture number five is is how long it a take. But read the read it complete because it's five. How long it it a takes? I mean the number six. It says, "Can you explain no, me?" Number number five. Ah, number five. How, how long does it a it a take? It take. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, how long it take? Uh, the thing is that the number five. I don't see the the complement. I mean, it's only at the equation, so we had to write the complement. Like, uh, do you know? Uh, Could you tell? Huh? Or uh -huh. please tell me, maybe. Okay. Yes. Please tell me. Uh -huh. Please tell me how long. How long does it take? It how long it takes. Okay. Thanks. Yes. Great. How long is it take, teacher? That's it. Yes. I think it could be, please tell me how long it takes. Because it is the person. But I don't know if we are asking is right to to change the bear take to takes The well, teacher. I got the the microphone off. <laughs> I was I was saying with the microphone off. That happens. So which one? I'm sorry. You were saying like the. In that case, we have the number six. How do I do this exercise? Can you explain? Can you explain? Me? Uh huh. Sorry. Can you explain how I do this ex this exercise? Mm -hmm. En este caso, cuando es un indirect, se pierden los auxiliares. Como el do, el, 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 el das, mm -hmm. no se ocupan. Por eso es una indirect. Mm -hmm. Entonces, when reporting question, it is especially important to pay attention to the sentence order. Because when we report yes or not, equations connect the reported equations using if, so in that case, when we use them, we don't need to use like does, do, because it's as it's indirect. Or we could say like, I'm not saying formal, but it is not a question that goes directly to the, to the speaker. For example, you say, what does your father do? What does your father do? ¿Qué hace tu papá? What does? Entonces te dice, please tell me what your father does. Entonces lo dejaste al final. What your father does. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's see. The number five says, please tell me how long it takes. Uh -huh. Y le agregamos el takes. Because ya se... With the verb be, teacher. I'm sorry? How long? Uh, using the verb be, how long is the state or um, like this one? What number? Number four. Number uh, no, 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 sorry. No, it take. No, no problem. I'm sorry. Okay. Number so how, how long? Mm -hmm. um, take. Please, please tell, please, or oh, please tell me how long it takes. It yes. Takes. Exactly. Takes. Thank you very much. Yes. Porque ya no es, digamos, una oración pura, sino que ya se convierte en una oración indirecta. Por eso es que ya no tengo que agregarle un auxiliar. Recuerden que usamos los auxiliares cuando es pregunta y forma negativa. I don't like food. I don't like salad. I don't like fast food. Do you play video games? Entonces, cuando es pregunta y forma negativa, 
siempre van los auxiliares. Pero como esta es una pregunta indirecta, es decir, no es una pregunta formal, ya eh, va de forma indirecta. Entonces, por eso es que los auxiliares desaparecen. Ok, help me with the number six. Um, how do I do this exercise? ¿Cómo podría ser? Number six. I think Raquel uh, answered that that number. Mm -hmm. We're going to write it in the chat. So. So in that case, number six will be like this one. Can you explain, or can you explain me, or can you explain how I do this exercise? Because that is a, an indirect equation. So for the number six, look at the chat. For, for the auxiliary verb, that teacher. Yeah, so I, I eliminate the auxiliary because it's not mm -hmm. a direct equation. So it's not a formal equation. Number seven. That's that question. I like it. <laughs> Is there any change? Can I have a pay, a pay rise? Um, Is there any chance I can? Can I? I can have a pay rise. Um. Is there any chance I can? Or Hi. I have? Uh huh. I so have you had pay to pay rise. Yeah, uh, which one do you think? Or is there any chance I have a pay raised? Yes. Could it be, I'm sorry, I have one question. Could it be right if I say, is there any chance that I can have a party rise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, excellent. Okay. So also can could be could be used. Is there any chance that I mm -hmm, that I can have a pay raised? That is a good idea, of course, in the jobs, right? Is there any chance that I can have a pay raised? That will be for the number seven. Look at this. Number eight, look at the number eight and tell me how this is possible, this sentence. I wonder if you could, I wonder if you could tell me, if you could tell me how the films ends, right? So that will be um, how the film ends. I wonder, or oh, that will be, I wonder if you could if you could tell me how the film ends. Podría decirme cómo termina la película? So in that case, we use this one. La nueva nueva sería, how did, did he start the car? Do you have an idea? Do you have any um, idea? Do you have an idea? How, look at this one. How he starts the car. He start, starts the car. Okay, so do you have any any idea? Okay, writing. Any idea how he starts the car? 
look at in the number 10. And so I'll, using the auxiliary, I'd be great. I'd be grateful if estaría grateful if you could if you if you could turn the radio down and in that case i'll be grateful if you could turn the radio on okay in that case we will see this statement and also you can compare in the chat the possible answers about it. And we will continue and look at this one. So, and we will continue guys working in more exercises related to this one. And well, actually I was checking that the time has already gone so fast, definitely. But tomorrow we will continue working with these exercises guys. So we will continue working some, some examples, check the sentences, look at the chat, how the answers will be, and you also you can compare in that case. It's about practicing. See you tomorrow, teacher. So yeah. see you tomorrow, teacher. too. Thank you. <laughs> eh, solo algo de que se retiren, por favor, antes que se retiren. Me estaban diciendo de que habían algunos estudiantes que todavía no habían completado unos ejercicios anteriores. Entonces, recuerden que es de suma importancia que usted vaya realizando los ejercicios en el tiempo estipulado por el programa. Entonces, sí les voy a pedir a aquellos, eh, pues, que si les hace falta algún ejercicio, que por favor lo completen, porque es algo que se, ya se sabe desde los inicios del curso y se viene diciendo constantemente. Así que eso sería todo. Y have a beautiful night to all okay. of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Take care. Bye, bye.